I have another wool blanket project for you. This time, a hat. If you're interested to see how I made this hat, keep watching. Okay, before we get started, I thought I would just take a minute to, to explain how I arrived at this design hat. So to start with, the very fact that I'm making a hat came out of comments from viewers who commented on some of the other wool blanket projects that they'd like to see if I could make a hat. So I thought that was a great idea. I began to look at different hat designs and there were three basic designs that I felt were possibles. One design was known as the pillbox and the pillbox is simply a round or an oval top and then a cylinder sewn around the sides of it. Uh, I wasn't sure how it was going to look. I didn't think it was something that would work out well in the wool blanket. So, And I also realized I had to be able to explain it after I built it. So I wanted to keep it as simple as possible for me and for everybody else. So I discarded that one. The next one I looked at is known as a three panel hat. And basically you would have a three or four inch wide strip that would run from the front of your forehead down over the top of the back of your hat. And on either side would be two half moons. Again, somewhat complicated. It sounds simple, I know, but when you get, go to put that into practice, it's, it was much more difficult than I, than I realized it would be. So the one I arrived at is known as a four panel hat. Now it's not quite the same as the Viking style four panel hats you can look and find. This one was made so that there was a peak on top, but it was basically four domed shapes that came to the center. And you'll see what I mean when we go to the pattern. So I did a lot of looking online. There was all kinds of sewing tutorials for doing this with fleece, but I could find only one that used a wool blanket to do this. So I want to give credit to Wellsby's Roots, who made one from a wool blanket a few years ago, and I will put a link to his video in the show notes below, because it was as close as anything that I could find. So my video is basically his video just refined in a way that I could explain it to you. All right, so that's the background of the hat. Now let's get to building it. Okay, before we can get started cutting away at the blanket and sewing the hat together, we're going to need to create a pattern. And in order to create a pattern, we're going to need a few measurements. So to get those measurements, first thing we're going to need is something to record them on. Get yourself a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil because you're going to have to write down three measurements. Then you're going to need some way of taking those measurements. Ideally, if you have it, is one of these tailor's tape. They make it a lot easier to take that measurements. If you don't have one of these, no problem. If you have a regular measuring tape, then open that up on the floor. Take a piece of string. You're going to use this to take the measurements and then lay it against the measuring tape so you know exactly how long it was and then you write them on the paper. Okay, so let's get started. So the first measurement you're going to need for this is the circumference of your head where you want the bottom of the hat to rest. So for me, I like to have it just over my ears, the bottom of the hat. So I'm going to go around my head. I probably should take my glasses off, make it a little easier on myself. I'm going to go around my head just at the top of my ears to the center of my forehead. And where it meets, I'm going to grab the string so you can see how long that is, and I'm going to write that measurement down. So I've already done this, but you go ahead and do this now. All right, next measurement you're going to need is where from the bottom of the hat to the top center of your head. So for me, I want the bottom of this hat to be just about the bottom of my ears. So I'm going to measure from here up the side of my head to this top center. Hopefully I'm doing this correctly. I'm trying to look at myself in the camera. And now I'm going to measure that. So that's a lot shorter. So take that measurement, write that one down. And the third and final measurement you're going to need is from just above your ears to the top center of the hat or of your head. So from here to here. Take that one, write that one down. All right, you've got those three measurements written down. Now I'll show you how to turn those measurements into a pattern. All right, here's a drawing that I created that represents the pattern that we're going to use to make the hat. So I know it looks a little confusing right now. There's an awful lot on this piece of paper, but I think it'll make sense as we go along. So the first measurement that we took was the circumference of our head. And that's going to determine how long a piece of blanket we want to cut out. So for me, it was 25 inches. And you can see that marked right here at 25 inches. 
but you can also see that I actually added a full inch to the length of that. It's right here. There's 26 inches because you need a half inch on either end when you bring it around to sew together. That's called a seam allowance. There has to be a little distance in from the edge for the stitching to hold on to. So I used an inch could probably got away with a little bit less, but you know my philosophy. You can always cut it off, but you can't put it on. So an inch, at least an inch added. So I'm working with one inch longer. So for me, my piece of fabric is going to be 26 inches long. Now, we took a measurement from the bottom of our ear, or roughly the bottom of our ear, to the top center of our head. And for me, that measurement was nine and a half inches. But I've decided that I want to roll up the bottom of the hat so that I have a roll that I could put down layer later, I guess, or to add extra warmth around my ears. And I've decided I want that to be three inches in length. Again, if it turns out that three inches too much, I can cut a little bit off. So for me, I said it was nine and a half inches from the bottom of my ear to the top center of my head. So I added three inches for a total of 12 and one half inches. So that's what I have here is 12 and one half inches. So I know now that I'm going to cut out a piece of wool blanket that is 26 inches long and 12 and one half inches wide. So when I get to that point, I'll bring that piece of blanket back and we'll talk, go to the next step. Okay, so I have my piece of wool blanket cut from that piece that we've been working with. So my wool blanket piece is 26 inches long and 12 and a half inches wide. I went ahead and drew two lines on the wool blanket that we're going to use for the next steps. So the lines running up from the, across the width of it, are in one half inch from the edge. So that gives me a 25 inch across here, and that is going to be where I do the sewing. It's right up that brown line there. I have a line drawn pretty much down the center. It's not quite. It's actually six inches down from the top. So this is the top of the hat. It's six inches down because that was the measurement from just above my ear to the top center of, the, of my head. So six inches. So knowing that this is 25 inches long, I want four, back to my drawing, I want four peaked domes that are six inches tall and in this case six and a quarter inches wide. Now if you look you can see that they're not straight triangles because I found in, in a test hat that I made for myself that if you make a curved dome then it'll uh, come together much nicer when you sew it. So I used a piece of stiffer cardboard type material and I created the pattern that is six inches in this direction, six and a quarter inches in this direction. So what I'm going to do now is start at one corner, lay it down on the lines I've drawn, and trace it around with a marker and move it across so that I've got four domes drawn onto the piece of wool. And when I've done that, I'll bring you back. All right, I actually went ahead, not only did I draw the domes on, but I decided to save a little bit of time and cut them out. Uh, in full disclosure, I had, was not paying as close attention as I should have to what I was doing. And you can see that I had let my pattern, my little dome here, slide a little bit to the side on one of the measurements. So after the first one, they started to go off a little bit further. When I realized my mistake, I went back and redrew the dome in its correct place. The measurements and everything are correct on the dome, but uh, I had just let it slide somehow when I, when I went to draw it. So I had to go back and redraw them, and that's why you see some additional red lines that showed up on the wool. But that's not going to be an issue because remember, what we're drawing on and what I'm cutting out right now is this is, will be, when we're finished, the inside of the hat. So none of this lines are going to show at all. All right, so the next step will be to fold this thing in half, like this, line it up, and Although wool is not a very stretchy material, you may have to do a little manipulation around just to get everything lined up the way it needs to be. And the next step will be to 
So from the bottom up, and you'll notice I did not draw a seam allowance onto the domes. I could have, and it may have made it a little easier, but I, what I want to do is sew up the gray line or the brown line, and then around the top of the dome to dead center at the top, and that's where I'm going to stop. But I'm going to do the same thing on this side and draw or sew, not all the way down, but just starting here, sew up and stop at the top dead center. And we'll go to the next step after that. You'll see why we stop here. All right, we're getting pretty close to finished at this point. So what I've done so far is sewn up this line, around to the top, and stopped. Then I did the same thing just in from the edge a little bit on both sides, and I stopped top dead center. So this is the top of the hat. I know I've got it reversed from here. So around to here. Now I'll pick the hat up. And what's not sewn gets sewn. I guess that's basically it. See if I can just get it together in my fingers. Hopefully this is making sense to you. So this area on either side where my fingers are is not sewn right down to the line. And that's all that's left to do is sew those two lines. If your machine will handle it, go right up over the top, keep going right down to the other side. Uh, I, I've done this before with a piece of wool blanket. Mine won't handle it. So what I have to do is get up to the top and get as close to here as I can and then stop. And then there'll be a little tiny hole right there that I'll just stitch shut with the needle and thread. So when I've gotten to that point, I'll bring you back because we're not far from finish now. Okay, here it is, almost complete. I say almost because I just want to show you a few things that I did with the hat. So you can see how I brought the four peaks together at the top. And as I mentioned, they, my machine would not sew over the hole right there, so I will close that up with just a little bit of hand stitching. I did find that when I tried this on uh, that it was a little too long, so I ended up cutting about an inch, maybe an inch and a half off of the bottom, and you'll see in a second. Now here's the point where the original seam allowance, when we had drawn in that half inch, came down, and what you'll discover is I wanted to hide that seam allowance, otherwise when I folded it right side out, and I'll show you what I mean in a second, when I fold it right side out, the back of the hat, that seam allowance would have been showing. So all I did is open the stitching up a little ways, turn it inside out, and then stitch it closed again. So that's why it looks like that. Now let me turn it right side out. To about where it should work on me. And you can see now, now it is showing some of the, the, the marker lines, but you can see now where I wanted to hide that. So the seam allowance is now hidden on the inside of that flap. It's just aesthetic. It's not functional. It doesn't do anything for the function of the hat, but it does make it look a little neater. By the way, the wool will stretch a little bit. It'll lay flatter the more you wear it. Let me put it on. All right, I don't have a mirror to see what it looks like. I expect it's not the best looking hat in the world, but it fits me well. It's quite functional. It'll keep the uh, warmth in, the cold out. What else can you ask for from a hat? All right, if you've enjoyed this project and you'd like to see other projects like it made from wool blankets, then I have a couple videos that I'll link right here on the side where you can go and see some other projects made from the wool blanket. If you're interested, try them out. If you have any comments on this project, anything you would suggest I might do differently, or any suggestions for future projects made from wool blankets, then put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled, because it'll make all the difference. Bye for now.